what's going on you guys so today was just one of these kind of days where i woke up and i kind of wanted to just throw everything at these fish uh, me and my neighbor we have been talking about getting in out and trying to surf fish for some of these big bull reds he got a couple really nice big 12 foot rod setups um, I wanted to do a nice little how-to video on that. We brought the cast net. I wanted to catch some uh, big live mullet. I threw that net around for a little bit only to grab uh, some small little two and three inch mullet. The larger mullet were just too far away uh, from a casting distance for me to get. And I didn't want to float around on the boat and troll up and try to get them that way. I really wanted to just focus on doing everything from the shore today. Um, at least that's how the day started. So we set everything up. I did a nice little how-to video on how to rig everything up. And I just kind of decided to stray away from doing that video. Now I will do a really good video for you guys out on the beach. Coming up here very, very soon today, which is kind of a dry run of wanting to mess around with some of the uh, new equipment that he got but the day turned out really nice once I decided to walk away from the big surf rods and pick up the spinning gear and get back to the artificial game. So that's where we're gonna leave off me heading down this sandbar, walking towards a seriously juicy spot. Oop, my bridge is going underwater. So while he's back there managing those rods, he's gonna yell at me and I'm gonna attempt to sprint <laughs> back if we get something big on i can't help myself but i'm going to target these little grassy uh islands right here i'm gonna fish all around this point and there's water pushing through right here making a, a beautiful choke uh so i'm gonna see if i can pull a flounder out of here maybe catch some uh, trout they're rolling in but what i'm gonna throw is this uh chatterbait so if you guys don't know what a z-man chatterbait is it's it's uh kind of similar to a bucktail jig in a way it's just it's basically just a, a, a weighted jig head with a nice little skirt and it's got this little blade on the top here and as you basically roll it and crank it slow roll it uh, just slow reel it in it's going to make a, a really really crazy vibration and flashing noise i've got it paired with a uh, z-man full wrench curly tail grub this one is scented it's chartreuse it's white uh, anytime i'm out here trying to target flounder specifically in the sound or near the sound like we are I go with a lighter bait presentation. Um, so you could just slow roll this thing like I mentioned, or you can bounce it off the bottom like a jig. I'm gonna kind of do a little bit of everything, but I'm gonna see, this just looks so good. Look at that, there's tons of mullet in here. This is some of the mullet that I was trying to net earlier. They got really, really spooky. Uh, so I'm gonna throw right into that cut right there. And if there ain't a fish in that cut, there ain't gonna be a fish anywhere else out here. I can tell you that. Nah, that's not the truth, but it does look fishy. So we're gonna fish it, here we go. Boy, these stingrays are thick out here. There's one right here. There's another one right over here. Now, as you reel this chatterbait, you're gonna feel a vibration. You're gonna feel it going That's normal. That's exactly what it's supposed to do. It's putting out that vibration that's gonna get that fish's attention. Now, the key is to not step on a stingray. Although they don't send you to the emergency room, they do remind you that they are very painful. Boy, that thing looks good, sunk coming through the water. All right, let's get back there a little more. Boop, boop. <laughs> I poke these stingrays with my rod, that way I don't accidentally step on them. I'd rather scatter them and scare them away. Who's calling me? Pete with Blue Water Charter. Hold on, you guys. I got Pete on the line. Pete, brother, you trying to make it on my uh, new YouTube video or what? You guys know how to tie me? Look at that. All right, you guys, so let me show you the power of the Z-Man and this elastic material. 
it's naturally buoyant. See how that tail sticks up in the air like that? That hook is straight up. So every time you bounce this thing, those little, um, those little rubber ends are kind of fluttering, getting attention. That tail's doing a tail stand up in the air and that hook point is straight up. But you can, that's, the, that's the beauty of these chatterbaits is you can just slow roll them or you can bounce them. And as soon as it stops and comes to rest, bang, tail stand, hook straight up in the air, you're good to go. What we got here? That a flounder? Oh, it is. It's a nice flounder. <laughs> what did I tell you guys? I told you that color would do it. Am I recording? I am. You always got to check that chartreuse color, that appearance. I'm just going to walk him on over, keep the tension on the line. And that looked exactly like a flounder ambush spot. And swim him right on up. Bang, hello big girl. Look how pretty. Man, I gotta pull the phone out, you guys. How about that girl? Gorgeous flounder. Absolutely gorgeous. On the Z-Man chatterbait. All right, let's put her in the cooler. And I'll go get and see if there's another one. That fish right there is every bit of 17, 17 and a half inches. All right. Let's get her away. Hello, darling. I'm just going to leave her hooked in the mouth and walk back that way I don't lose her all right so I put my flounder in the cooler and I brought back up <laughs> Vince is coming out here with a popping cork he's got his camo shirt on so this fish ain't even gonna have a chance but he's gonna throw that cork around the grass and I'm gonna throw this chatterbait continue to throw this chatterbait and we're gonna see if we can pull anything else out usually where there's one flounder there's more which is why I was excited all right, so as soon as I left out of here back uh, to the boat, or actually back to the cooler on foot with that flounder, these guys over here that were fishing this spot over here to beside me saw that, and they motored right through here. They got stuck on the sandbar that I'm literally standing and fishing on, running the motor wide open, just completely blowing this spot up, which is so frustrating, I tell you. Uh, just, I don't know if they didn't see me. I'm gonna just say they didn't see me and not say the fact that they have terrible fishing etiquette um, and just basically took my spot as soon as I walked away. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hope that that didn't happen just because I like to believe uh, that people have decency and, and are ethical with fishing, but it is what it is. Um, but I hope these flounder didn't get blown out because of that, because of them motoring wide open. But we'll see. We're going to fish it. I got Mr. Vince over here. I got backup. He brought the popping cork, so we're going to see if we can pull any trout or any more flounder out of here.
There you are. Oh, that's a good trout. You guys how's that for a trout? Gee, my knee. She is thick. Thick, thick, thick. How big is she? Oh. Easy. Oh, that's a good hook set. Good hook set. All right. Mouth pinched 18 inches. She inhaled that uh, four inch voodoo shrimp. All right, so we are fishing for dinner tonight. There's this little trout, little trout, 18 inches. She's fat and she is definitely going home. Probably going to be the only good sized trout I keep today. Get her in there, get her chilled out. Big flounder, big trout, wrench my hands. All right, so let me show you the fishing setup. Now that we are uh, out of the sound, we're back just popping cork around a little bit, see if we can catch some dinner before we head home. This is that Diablo Fuego 2500. I got that paired with this Falcon Coastal Clearwater Series. This is a uh, seven foot six medium really nice rod to pair uh, with the popping cork setup my popper as you guys know it paradise bomber popping cork this is about a 24 inch piece of leader and here's the success to that big trout this is um, the egrets of uh, uh, voodoo shrimp not maybe not egret but it's the voodoo shrimp four inch uh, the majority of the ones that you can buy at walmart bass pro places like that are the little three and a quarter i decided to step up to a four inch shrimp and I kept getting little tail grabbers here and there um, and then finally this one grabbed committed and went under but big bait profile big fish I'm always in the mindset of that little bait catches all fish big bait catches big fish so this is what it did or sorry that's what it took to uh, catch that fish and we're just fishing around grass underneath these grasses there's some moistures I know exactly where we're at you guys that are uh, in the savannah area probably know where I'm at too it's no mystery um, but this is the type of fishing where you can get out here and you can catch a bunch of fish easy. So popping cork with shrimp. If you don't want to do artificials, throw live. This looks exactly like a live shrimp to me. I uh, just don't have to rebate my hook every five seconds when a trash fish hits it. That's it.